It's the centerpiece of the museum is the box truck that you see behind me. It's a, a replica of a produce truck that was used in a case that was prosecuted in 2008 in the federal court system. Uh, the bosses of workers um, who were picking tomatoes held them in a truck like this. They were locked in overnight to make sure that they'd be available to pick tomatoes the next day. Those workers had been beaten, chained, physically restrained by tying them to poles by their bosses. They owed their bosses money for things like rent to sleep on the floors of trucks, um, money to $5 every time they wanted to bathe after working for a long day in the fields, which was just washing off with a garden hose in the backyard um, for food that the family would provide for them because they didn't have any money to buy their own food. So um, they weren't paid. Um, they were cheated terribly, um, and that case went through the federal court system in, in 2007, 2008. There's, but that's not even the last one. There are currently cases under investigation, and uh, a, the brand new case that just came to light um, with the unsealing of an indictment about two weeks ago, in which Haitian workers had been brought over on H-2 agricultural worker visas, um, and where their documents were seized, the women workers were abused, um, no one was paid for the work that they were doing. Um, and that's, that's as recent as a few, as a few weeks ago. Um, so these are, this, these are things that are happening now. These, this is not history. Um, it's living history. It's, it's um, abuses that are current and, and happening in um, the Florida agricultural industry today. The shirt that you see here is a shirt that was worn by a young farm worker um, who in 1996 was beaten bloody by his boss for just wanting to stop and drink water. Um, at that time it was commonplace um, for violence to exist in the fields. Um, there were four or five reported cases every year. But in this particular one, the, the young worker went to the Coalition of Homophily Workers, uh, an organization that had really just started to come together of farm workers in the community. Um, and they, in turn, um, marched to the home of that boss who had beaten him, uh, saying, to beat one of us is to beat all of us. Um, the coalition has also fought back against the sub-poverty wages that have been stagnant since 1978. The bucket you see here, for example, that weighs 32 pounds when it's full of tomatoes is here for people to try to lift and um, with a, a, um, 32 pounds of rice in it right now. But for every bucket that a worker picks, they receive 40 to 45 cents, the same rate paid in 1978. That means that to make $50 a day, a worker has to pick two tons of tomatoes to make the equivalent of minimum wage, two and a half tons. The agricultural industry is, is complex and it's built complex for a reason. Um, workers are working for large um, producers of tomatoes but they're recruited by crew leaders who serve as the middlemen. Um, but in the end, uh, the, the large buyers of tomatoes are really forcing the wages to remain low um, by demanding volume. Uh, volume of tomatoes at the lowest possible prices. So the only ones who really suffer that um, are the workers whose wages remain stagnant because of those conditions. And when we have degraded conditions and sub-poverty wages in an industry, that's when we see cases of forced labor come to light. We do have a long legacy of of um, forced labor in the agricultural industry. In fact, it's hard to say that um, Florida has ever been free from forced labor. It's, since the agricultural industry has existed in Florida. And so it's this ongoing mentality that workers are less than human beings that really helps to perpetuate the, the, the current um, situation for farm workers, workers who are enslaved and also workers who are free but working under conditions that, um, that are like sweatshops in the fields. About 90% of the tomatoes that are consumed on the East Coast during the winter months come from Florida-based companies, come from the area of Immokalee. Um, and so that means that any, most consumers at one point or another have encountered tomatoes picked under uh, sweatshop conditions by, by farm workers. Um, and so the workers um, have decided to 
you try to use the volume purchasing power of large corporations, large buyers of tomatoes, to change the conditions that they face every day in the fields. Um, and to date, um, have agreements with eight corporate buyers, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Taco Bell's parent company, Yum Brands, Subway, Burger King, Whole Foods Market, Compass Group, Bon Appetit, and Aramark. Um, who have all agreed to pay a little bit more for the tomatoes that they buy to make sure that workers are making a little bit more money, that that money gets passed on to workers in their paychecks, and also to work with the Coalition of Mockley Workers in implementing a code of conduct that protects workers' basic human rights and gives them a voice in the workplace, and also sets out zero tolerance for conditions of forced labor in any of those buyers' supply chain. Um, with those eight corporate, bu corporate buyers who are participating in, in these fair food agreements. There are um, actually many corporations that still have not come to the table, um, including some of the major supermarket chains, including Ahold, which owns Stop and Shop, Giants, Martins, um, and are all throughout the Northeast. Kroger in the Midwest and in South um, Southeast, and and also Publix. Um, it's the the main supermarket chain in in Florida, and we've been asking them and Trader Joe's, as well as um, most of the other supermarket chains in the, in the United States, to come on board to be part of improving conditions for farm workers.